Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 145, featuring Kyle Brown. I'm so grateful that you are here, tuned in to this episode with me at Child Care Rockstar Radio. Hi, I'm your host, Chris Murray, and thanks for tuning in. I hope that your month is going well and that your 2023 is going without a hitch and going very smoothly. A lot of us have been working in the early learning industry in new ways and innovative ways coming out of the last three years of a crazy world. And I just hope that you're vibing along with us in a really playful, harmonious way. And that is today's episode theme. It's called A Playful and Harmonious Approach to Life with my guest, Kyle Brown. Kyle was a speaker at our last Child Care Success Summit event in Nashville last fall. And he happens to also be my personal fitness trainer. I am excited to bring Kyle to you today. We talk a little bit about fitness inside the classroom and outside the classroom, having a fit mindset. We talk about a holistic and playful approach to being a human and a parent and a business owner. Kyle brings a couple decades of expertise to the podcast today in all aspects of a professional entrepreneurial career. He has been a, a holistic fitness coach, a, an author, he's a speaker, he's an entrepreneur, he's built several businesses, including he was the host of an ESPN radio show, and he created his own fitness brand called Rapid Harmony that I'm a member of. And he also created a shake, a fitness shake or nutrition shake business. And he's also got a lot of nutrition knowledge and credentials as well. So we welcome Kyle to the podcast, something different today to talk a little bit about aspects of overall health, fitness, wellness, and mindset and leadership. So with all of that in play, what do I got going on here in the Carbondale, Colorado podcast studio? I have been skiing. I have been doing a bit of traveling and I have a lot queued up for March. We are headed at the end of the month to Mexico for our exclusive high-end VIP trip with our Empire members of the Child Care Success Academy. So I cannot wait for a three-day mastermind experience with lots of cool adventures and business conversations and high-level masterminding talks. And that's going on at the end of March in beautiful Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And I am traveling to Miami. I'm I'm already out of breath and I haven't even gotten on the airplane yet. I'm going to Miami next week Uh, taking my daughter with me to uh, mastermind with my own group of seven and eight figure women, women business owners at the highest level in Allie Brown's The Trust, which is my business mastermind group that I belong to, uh, one of several. And um, the other cool trip that I'm doing in March is I am taking my leadership team to Orlando and we're actually staying on site at the venue where we are hosting the 2023 Child Care Success Summit this fall. And I hope that you've saved the date in your calendar. It's October 12th through the 14th this year, Thursday, Friday, Saturday flow. As always, we actually kick off on Wednesday night, the 11th of October. So pencil that in and I hope to see you there. It's going to be the largest and the most successful and best Child Care Success Summit ever because we're staying at the gorgeous Rosen Shingle Creek, which is one of the top resorts in Orlando, and they have a great pool and they have uh, an amazing meeting space. It's all on one level with gorgeous, huge windows and a fantastic facility. 
big, tall ceilings and a huge exhibit hall, as well as an amazing ballroom and lots of breakout rooms. So we're going to take over the resort and have an amazing time. And it's extremely conveniently located about 15 minutes from Epcot, Disney and the airport. So it's right in the middle of all the things in Orlando that you want to be close to. So I'm really excited about our coming summit to this fall. And so we'll be going in March, uh, second week of March to uh, walk the venue and meet with the hotel staff and start our pre-planning flow for October. So that's a little bit of behind, behind the scenes of what I'm up to here at the Child Care Success Company. And very, very busy, uh, as always, trying to innovate and create new things for you, up-level always, create new trainings, and continue to write my, my next book. So that is all happening here uh, at the home office of CCSC. So with that, I'm going to uh, introduce you and share with you a journey with my friend Kyle Brown, fitness expert and fitness guru to the stars. Uh, let's meet Kyle and thank you guys so much for, for uh, being with me here on this mm -hmm. podcast journey. I love having you with me and I really appreciate uh, you and everything that you do for our world and for the children in your care. All right. Enjoy this episode here at Child Care Rockstar Radio. Let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I am so excited to introduce to you my good friend and my personal trainer, Mr. Kyle Brown is joining us for the podcast today. Kyle, how are you? I am fantastic. Doing great and uh, excited to be here. Awesome. Where are you right now? I am sitting in the middle of this wave behind me. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> which was really fitting when I lived in San Diego last 20 something years, but I'm actually out uh, not too far from your neck of the woods in a uh, little area near Boulder. Awesome. Very, very good. Uh, so yeah, we are about two and a half hours away from each other via car mm -hmm. and we work out together remotely via zoom three or four times a week. So, uh, and we've been doing that for about 14 months, 13 months. Yes. And incredibly, I'm sitting here admiring this great background behind you, not knowing that I have been there so many times, just facing the other direction. Totally. So, <laughs> so awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, this is my office. It's also been my home gym. It's been very many. It's my podcast studio. It has many different hats that it wears. So, uh, so tell us a little bit more about you uh, and your uh, what do you do in the fitness industry and entrepreneurially? Just tell us more about your background. Ah, so I started in the fitness industry very young. Uh, I like to say six years old, and it's really evolved. Uh, currently, what I'm doing is all self-mastery for heart-centered entrepreneurs with big missions, which is why uh, we go together like peanut butter and jelly. It's, uh, <laughs> it's been a blast, but I started with the physical and then the nutrition and then extended it on to mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic. Cool. What are some highlights of your journey? I know that you had an ESPN radio show. You can tell us more about that. I know you had a shake business, which was delicious mm -hmm. shakes, which um, you don't have anymore, but tell us a little bit more about any highlights that you'd like to share. Uh, let's see. I would say the biggest highlight is the idea of getting to wake up and create what you do every day. <laughs> that overall concept has been really neat. And as an innovator and as an entrepreneur, it's been shifting and evolving for a very long time. Uh, probably two of the most fun highlights of my career. One would be when I had the ESPN radio show, I would go and I'm a go-giver. So I'm just, who can I help out and connect with? And then leverage those four letters. So I would go to all the celebrity gifting suites in Hollywood and the different award shows and different moments were just nothing short of magical. But uh, probably one of the funniest highlights I had is I was at this fitness event in Kentucky and all of a sudden I realized I ran into uh, Jim Brown, who's 
one of the best football players of all time. And I had just been at a golf event with him in LA. Like, wow. what the heck are you doing in Louisville, Kentucky? And he said, uh, we got the Muhammad Ali awards. And it turns out he was the highlight of the night. He said, you should go. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to figure out a way to, to get on in. And I'm like, well, I had my ESPN shirt there. So long story short, I maneuvered my way into a press pass. It was black tie and I had nothing. Uh, except for just that shirt. And I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, it starts in like an hour and a half. And I ended up grabbing a friend, grabbing my cell phone because I had no video. And we ended up going and doing interviews of people like Susan Sarandon on the red carpet. It was pretty hilarious. Wow. That's super cool. What an experience. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. And I think there's a there's a great lesson just for anybody. It's not a fake it till you make it. It's more of like a a combination of believe it till you achieve it and also act as if. And for me, I was just, I was smiling, happy and focusing on the connections and acting as if I, it doesn't matter that I don't have a black tie and I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. So that's, that's awesome. I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. And I think one of the things that sets you apart with the group that you've created in your business rapid harmony is that you have focused on the whole um, you know, the head, the heart and the wellness, the body, all the components of this, the entrepreneur is your, like, that's your jam, your rapid harmony. And you could talk a little bit about what does rapid harmony mean and why you kind of created this brand, but the group, the group is we're working on transformation. We're working on personal, professional and fitness growth. So you're much beyond a fitness trainer. You know, you, you've like <laughs> taken what you're doing and you're touching all parts of the human that you serve. So um, like, how did that come about? How did you evolve into rapid harmony? Uh, well, thank you. First off, I, uh, I appreciate the awareness of that. And, and it really uh, a lot of trial by error within my own journey and realizing that I was that entrepreneur who was so focused you know, obviously I focused on the fitness and nutrition and I was so dialed in there and on the mental toughness and all of those, we'll call them masculine energies, uh, even the divine ones where I was structured and disciplined and dedicated, but I had shut off any kind of feminine energy and everything was push, hustle, struggle and go, go, go. And I was working like, you know, I, I would pride myself on my work ethic. So it'd be like, and people would be like, oh, I'm working 40 to 60 hours a week. I'm like, Psh. like I work between 90 and 110 between my two businesses every week. And uh, that's left all the other buckets of life very betrayed, including my own health, regardless of how I looked on the outside. And I ended up getting uh, uh, what appeared like the most extreme case of COVID about a year before COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And as that happened, I ended up with double pneumonia, rushed to the hospital, uh, they call the code septic. My organs are shutting down. I'm wondering what the heck is going on. I was like mind over matter. And as I'm watching this process go on, I was sitting here and I'm like, I only do holistic natural stuff and I don't take antibiotics. Well, in that moment, I had double IVs messing with every antibiotic concoction in the world to try to save my life. Wow. And I'm in the ICU for a while and I got a very clear message of um, like, you're not really living in alignment with everything you're preaching and everything you're trying to become. So uh, this, this hustle route doesn't really work and I needed to surrender, tap back into the feminine side, which was such a huge part of me as a kid and harmonize the two. Mm -hmm. And as I did that, I, uh, I looked at this whole idea of, you know, what the Japanese call Kiroshi, which is working yourself to death. And I was like, I basically have done it. And uh, it took almost three years where my all of my masculine, both my divine and my wounded masculine had been shut off. And I was fully in my feminine. And I got to experience what that was like, not by choice, but by, you know, recovery and also uh, we'll call it spiritual choice. Mm -hmm. And and during that time frame, everything that was an identifier of me of like, you're the 5% lean guy, I can only ask you a fitness question uh, was shut off. I'm like, I can't even work out. Right. So as I went through that journey, I realized how essential it was for entrepreneurs, business leaders to really 
learn how to harmonize that divine masculine and divine feminine within. And I tapped back into all these things I've been trained in in the past around managing emotions, around managing stress and anxiety and overwhelm. And then say, okay, now how do I create a system that really encapsulates everything there? Mm. And as I as I tapped into that, that's really where the whole idea of rapid harmony came in. Because uh, living in the 3D, let's face it, we all want results now. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> we, we, we want to change and transform now. So the rapid part fits. But the the true essence of all of it is like the achiever's mindset where everything is right there at your fingertips. And I'm almost there and I'm almost there. And then the next level and then the next level is like, it's it's uh, very unfulfilling. So mm-hmm. if if you can step back and breathe and step into harmony, then it's you 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 realize with gratitude everything you have now, and then you can step into those levels by just simply opening up doors and boundaries and things that you've been blocking about yourself the entire time. Yeah, well, I love that. That I've never actually heard you explain the brand and the essence of it to me, and I love 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 that. So that's mm-hmm. fantastic. I love the you know just being cognizant of the masculine and feminine energies. Uh, one of the first calls that, cause we have, we have weekly calls as well as of course, working out um, with the group We're work, we're weekly calls with the group and then working out. But one of the first calls I was on with you was a sharing of masculine and feminine, and then trying to integrate it for the people on the group. So I remember that. Cause I was like, wow, that was really powerful. And that's when I had just met you. And, um, also the integration of past and present and future. So past and future coming into the present and also the integration of positive and negative to come to a place of neutrality. So I love all of the harmonizing of the different, yes. um, you know, layers of, of existence. So that's very, very cool. That's a huge part of what we're working on with uh, the book. Total self-trust is all going to be about exactly that. So it's accessible to anyone client or not, because it's it's such a beautiful way of looking at life where you look at it like a bowling alley, for example, is like you when you can have those bumpers on, you can't lose. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you create that divine masculine structure and then you allow yourself to play and flow. And it's so nice. much easier way to do life. Hey, I like to bowl with the bumpers on still. Am I allowed to do Heck that? Heck yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. After a couple of cocktails, the bumpers right. are, are needed even more. So <laughs> I love it. So tell us a little bit about your home, personal life. Uh, you're in outside of Boulder in Arvada, Colorado, and mm-hmm. what you got going on at home? You have kids. Tell us more. Yes. So I decided, well, I'm going to move to a very quiet, peaceful area, just beautiful at the base of the mountains. But I'm going to go two feet in with, you know, incredible wife, Sarah, which is, you know, total speaking of harmony total harmony to me she really counterbalances my visionary mindset she's incredibly grounded and practical nice she's got two kids uh ava who actually came and spoke at your event which was amazing uh she's 11 she's type 1 diabetic and she's like raising the female version of wayne dyer up and coming is what it feels like it's a beautiful thing (laughs) And then Brayden, who is just magical, this little jokester, he's eight years old. And uh, and every time I look at him, I'm like, wow, I'm seeing so much of me in you and so many pieces that I wish I had in me as a kid in you. And it's a really, mm-hmm. it's a really neat thing. So he's got this nice little balance going on right now between hockey and finger knitting. He's really digging the <laughs> finger knitting. <laughs> And the last, <laughs> the last piece of uh, very important, equally important family members is I am uh, nicely harmonized in the two dogs and two cats category. I'm a huge animal lover, very tapped into animal and nature. You'll recognize this little guy sitting at my desk all the time, my little medicine cards. Yeah, uh, I'm very tapped into animals in their meetings. So I've got my wolves and I've got my jaguars in the house and Nice. It's, uh, it's not a boring day here at any moment. There's always some entertainment going on. Yes. Love that. Very, very cool. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about fitness. Oh, before we try dive into that, I want to get a fun fact from you. So what is one thing that not a lot of people know about Kyle Brown? That's kind of a fun fact. I'm going to let you in on a fact that only one person knows about Kyle Brown <laughs> and it's you. 
Really? And here, yes. And here's what it is. 1991, <laughs> Kyle Brown went with his mom and Jeremy Stegmiller to his first ever concert in seventh grade and went and saw the Grateful Dead in Soldier Field. And as I was going over and discussing concerts, all of a sudden you realized, holy cow, you and I met before conceptually because we were in the same airspace because you were at that show, which I think is the coolest thing ever. (laughs) So that is one really uh, fascinating, unique thing that, uh, that now everybody else gets to share in on that joy that, you know, we were in that same place at that same time, which I always find those serendipities pretty amazing and magical where you're thinking like, like what if someone goes on a first date with somebody and they're sitting there and they had actually been in the same place so many times, but because their perceptual awareness is so closed off, they or their mood or they weren't focused on things, they missed out on that opportunity to connect yeah. with that individual a million times. So yeah. that's a I that's love a that. We both, <laughs> that's... we both partied with the dead. We both saw Jerry. It was amazing. We sure did. And I love that we had that realization and that experience, that shared experience. Yes. Maybe we were like one row apart from each other. Who knows? But Soldier Field, 1991, right? 1991. Yeah. Yeah. So much fun. 91, Grateful Dead. Love it. uh, Let's just just imagine a 13-year-old kid telling his mom he wants to go see the Grateful Dead and then selling her on the idea of, Mom, I don't smoke pot yet. <laughs> I just right. really like the music. Yeah. So <laughs> it was one of those moments. It was I love that your time. mom took you to that show because that's a very cool mom move. And I yeah. pride myself on being a cool mom. So uh, that that's she gets uh, five stars from me in that department. That's good. That's an absolute fact. And I can definitely attest that you are the coolest mom. <laughs> so I always watch your daughter come in when we're doing sessions to tell tell you have a good day. I love you. I mean, that is just a testament. That's the beauty yeah, thank behind you. the scenes to how much you've led as a mom. So it's really, thank cool. you. Yeah. I'm my, my relationship with my daughter is one of my big prides of my life. So thank you, Kyle. That's really sweet. It's huge. It's a huge one. Yeah. So, um, and for those, and so Kyle mentioned about being in, uh, Nashville with us at the summit in last October. So many of you guys were there. Um, a lot of the audience that's watching this episode was there and, we had a lot of fun with Kyle and he had a puppetry going on and characters and voices. And then his daughter gave, you know, she brought the house down with her shares and it was just an incredible session. So um, we, we really, really love that. Now let's talk about fitness. Why does having a fit body matter? How do you see fitness as contributing to one's quality of life? Oh, uh, great question. Uh, <laughs> It's, it contributes to one's quality of life, uh, especially as someone doing business and in your business life in ways we never even talk about or think about. Mm. The only thing that gets the attention is the meat suit, the physical aesthetic or the scale, which I wrote up my first book's called How Much Does a Zebra Weigh? And the animal was who, or the answer to give the book concept away is who gives a crap that nobody knows what anyone weighs. It's the most meaningless characteristic. And what really matters when it comes down to fitness is I'll go over a few things. First off, self confidence comes from really having a powerful mind inside of a healthy, fit body. We understand this when it comes to the quality of our automotives, the quality of our technology. Everything needs to be sleek. Everything needs to be highly functional. Everything needs to be plugged in. See, I'm charging my phone right now. But we forget to do the same thing to ourselves. Mm. It's just so paramount that you look at that holistic approach to fitness and, and look at it related to what is optimization, right? Optimization is the answer. So number one, a fast brain. When you are optimized, your brain is so fast that you think clearly, you think from a higher consciousness, more Mm -hmm. elevated level. So your decision-making is better and things move so much quicker within that range. And what it does is when people say, well, I don't have time to work out. 
I say, if you took care of yourself, you would create so much more time Yeah, because you'd learn how to optimize. And my favorite answer in 2021 of I don't have time to work out is I'll show you mine if you show me yours, which means I'll show you my screen time on my cell phone if you show me your screen time on your cell phone. Because if you look at your screen time on your cell phone and you were to spend half of that working out, you could probably make it in the NBA. Yeah. Love that. We all have time. You just have priorities and addictions that we need to break. That's it. Yeah. I'm about two hours a day. So you're spot on. Oh, you're crushing it. Two hours a day. The average person I think is between seven and nine. So Ooh. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's outrageous. So show me your screen time and then tell me you don't have time to work out. <laughs> All right. So everybody's homework off of this podcast episode is to go look at your screen time, track it, and then spend a third of it looking into fitness and working out. I love yes. that. Or, you know, definitely having that clarity about, about how much time that is. So that's, and that's super cool. I'll add in one more little piece on the time for everyone at home that can give you a little bit of a breather because I don't want to underestimate the power and the responsibility of managing all the things as in being a business owner and a parent or, 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 or the list goes so big. So one of the keys is really the idea of net time, no extra time. Can you tap into the idea of what other things can I do while I'm moving my body? Mm. Can I listen to the book that I wanted to sit down and read and I don't have time to, but I can listen to it on audio while I work out. Right. You know, all of those types of things. Can I make my business calls while I'm walking and talking? I get in so much exercise by being mobile during the day while doing the things I want to do and need to do mm -hmm. that it creates extra time that way. So try implementing that in while you look at that screen time shift. I think that'll help a lot. Well, the other thing that I you know, the reason I hired Kyle is I need the accountability. And I just found out that you actually do walk and talks yeah. with clients. And so whether you're going to do a walk and talk or do an actual workout with weights and all the stuff that I use or something that's in, in between hybrid, having somebody to do it with having an accountability buddy is where I'm going. Kyle is yeah. having somebody that, and for me, when I'm traveling, having the accountability buddy to get me up out of bed in the mornings when I'm traveling and get a couple workouts in. Well, I'm, you know, that, that piece is immeasurable. It's just the consistency. So we'll talk about consistency because yep. I do feel, awesome. you know, that that's, that's one of the key things. Um, so I don't know if I interrupted you there on your thoughts. We talked about optimizing, creating more time, um, and so this whole notion of why fitness matters, throwing out the scale, um, so is there anything else with that, that you wanted to share around just general fitness principles? Uh, yes. Um, I'll, I'll leave you all with one more really big key, which is what do little kids do? And a lot of you got to meet one of my little kids. What do little kids do, especially when they're littler than that, that at times we get really annoyed by, but it's really quite enlightened is they ask the question, why? And sometimes we give up and we say, because I said so. Right. <laughs> but we forget to ask why, because our society trains us to be obedient. And we're told that asking why is a bad thing, that you're just supposed to do what you're told. And that's the way things mm. tend to get systematized for efficiency. Mm -hmm. So if you can really get down into that one why question, specifically, not only the why you're doing this, but the idea of why should I want to feel better mm. and how will that shift everything? Because at the end of the day, it's not about the quantitative metrics. Everyone obsessed about the calorie rate, the heart rate, all that kind of garbage. They missed the point stepping into like the, wow, what would my life look like if I actually felt good almost all day long, instead of just dealt with this, not feeling good most of the day. Yeah. Like, that's the whole point is like, you actually just want to feel better and be happier. Like, yeah, it's, it's the why behind every one of your whys for the most part is we just all want to be happy and feel really good. And mm -hmm. that is priceless. You can't purchase that. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love that. And that also translates into, of course, habits of 
things that we do that end up depleting us and we're doing it because it's a habit and we don't feel good. So we grab for the sugar because it's a habit and it, we want, or we grab for the Red Bull or whatever those, it's almost like it's a, you know, it's a, it's a spiral. And then we right. just kind of go down and down and down. So energetically, you know, I can speak for me. Um, I feel better. I feel stronger. I feel more capable. I definitely feel like I have a faster brain, less brain fog, and just in general, happier in terms of just my energy throughout the day. So those are some of the results I've gotten. If that inspires anybody who's listening, um, that's great. That's a side benefit of this podcast. So let's talk a little bit about the, in the classroom and in the childcare environment itself for people listening, they're mostly all childcare leaders and owners listening, um, taking these concepts and then making an impact with teachers and kids in the classroom. Um, how, what are some maybe easy ways that we can extend these concepts into a classroom environment? Because I've mentioned this several times in sessions I've done and in the Academy with coaching about early education teachers are not as a group. Uh, they do not have a very high level of fitness in general. If you take all of our beautiful childcare teachers and you lump them, it's, it's oftentimes not the prettiest of pictures in terms of fitness. And, and I'm going to kind of calling that out, which is like, yeah. Hey, we need to help our teams be healthier. Um, and our little kids are, you know, seeing this as an example of, of how to live life. And I, so I just want to kind of invite a, a mindset shift for our teachers on behalf of our teachers and those children is what are some easy ways that people can get creative with maybe bringing fitness into a classroom environment? I think the most important piece there is setting the energetic container because the typical person, if you do your best to step into their shoes that would enter into childcare, they're empathetic, they're emotional, they're go-givers, their give hand is wide open and their receive hand is totally closed. Hmm. And so they're walking into this environment saying, how can I help? How can I help? And they're managing, you know, they're like this ultimate project manager, managing the emotions of all these kids and everything else like that. And there's like, give, 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 give. And this receive hand is totally closed. So if we approach it from an energy that is like, you know, you really should get in shape or, hey, why don't you eat this healthy thing? Or, hey, why don't you go take some time to work out? That is just creating more of a task on a to-do list and not showing them and inviting them to open up the receive hand. Mm. And no one likes proselytizing first. We all can point fingers at everybody else, say, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And I always say, when you're pointing one at me, you're pointing three back at yourself. Yeah. So if you can sit in the environment and just say, hey, number one, lead by example. You have to lead by example. No mm -hmm. one wants to be told what to do. Everyone wants to see you and go, what the heck are you doing? Right. Wow, that's interesting. What are you eating right now? What do you, you look really happy. You're glowing. What's going on? So that leading by example is number one. It always starts from the top down. Mm -hmm. And then second, think of it in terms of the receiving hand. You want to create space for them. You want it to be an open, exciting invitation. Hey, we're going to, you want the community camaraderie. Hey, we're going to go do this thing where we're all going to go for a walk and talk together. Hey, instead of having our meeting sitting in the classroom today with a whiteboard where half of us are sitting there trying to think like, should I have my third or my fifth coffee? What if we all went and walked and talked? Yeah. Your brain will move faster when you're walking and talking. That's why my, my mental game coaching meetings are walk and talk because their brains are going and their information they're getting is so much better. Nice. So lead by example, make it inviting, make it exciting, make it fun, make it playful. Don't make it <coughs> use words and commitments and commands that make the person feel even more defeated or that it's another task on the to-do list. I love that. And what about having a meeting in the playground? Yes, I'm huge on that. I'm so huge on that. So my daughter, Ava, who many of you met, she, I always say, is not an ageist whatsoever. So when she was like two, three, four, and we would bring her to the playground, she didn't care if you were two, three, four, or 80. She would walk up to you and say, want to play? Want to play? 
And she would just surprise people, just want to play. She didn't care. She'd play with anybody any age. So she would try to pull adults up to go play in the playground. And a lot of my fe fellow fitness pros sit here and wonder why so many people say, I don't have time to exercise, but they're sitting there writing that on their social media while sitting on a bench while their kids are playing on the, right. on the equipment. There is no better gym than a jungle gym. Get yourself out there and use the stuff with the kids. Be active. Yes. It'll create better connection. You'll burn more calories. I don't care what your constant static heart rate is. It is a tremendous, tremendous workout and it's so much fun. So find the fun in the thing and do your meetings that way, right? You, you have these, these pieces of equipment. Uh, the more meta way of looking at it, I would say would be this. Um, there is no magical age where we stop being a kid. It's not like you hit 18 and all of a sudden this supplement is now good for you. And it wasn't before 18. That's garbage. Right. Like we don't, we don't grow up. Like we shouldn't grow up. And if you look in the mirror and say, wow, I'm really boring. And the six and eight and 10 and 15 year old version of me would be like, loser, like <laughs> switch the hat, get yourself happy and active and vibrant and be the kid in those meetings. So love that. Can't agree more. So, so good. Um, let's talk about, uh, fatherhood, parenthood a little bit. Well, you've got an eight-year-old and an 11-year-old. So how has, um, doing what you're doing for your career and your, your personal journey, your personal core values, how has that impacted your, um, role as a dad? Hmm. How has that informed, like how you wake up and how you are with your kids every day? Great question. I'll, I'll start with first is we can only hold space and have the capacity hold space for others for the level of which we've had gone through ourselves. Yeah. And, and I feel like on the other side, I, I, I said, I want to sign up for the whole giant kitchen sink ice cream Sunday of life uh, and of parenthood. Yeah. Um, I'll start with this. One of the first things I did when I had Ava is I did two things. I did one from the actual hospital room is I seriously called my mom and I said, mom, I am so sorry. I looked everywhere. This is real conversation within seconds of Ava being born. I looked everywhere. I looked under the umbilical cord and I didn't see the manual. I just realized that you and dad winged it. I sort of knew this, but I didn't really realize it until now. You winged it. There's no manual. I am sorry for the pain in the butt I was. This was like this whole conversation. Like, oh, that's I didn't realize, like, there was no manual. So the second conversation I did <laughs> was I reached out to my sister-in-law and I started an apology tour because my brother's eight years older than me. And all my high and mighty judgments about what you should feed kids and shouldn't feed kids and you should mm. do this. And I can't believe your kids eat this. I apologize for all of it. Wow. And I'm still apologizing 11 years later. And she still <laughs> thinks it's funny. Because she's like, oh, yeah, you remember when you said they would never have this. You would never take them to ice cream. <laughs> Lessons learned. That's classic. The magic is in meeting yourself where you're at, right? Mm -hmm. That's strategy and benchmarking and execution. And I've had to do that as a parent. Um, I really know for me as a parent, it's, it's the goal isn't perfection 24, 7, 365. I'm on a very spiritual path. And my intention isn't to be the monk who sits in a cave and meditates all day long and someone comes in and asks them for wisdom. I want to be the monk who's sitting in the battlefield, who isn't the perfect monk all the time. And people come to him for wisdom. And I give them practical wisdom of how do you bring heaven to earth? And how do you bridge the gap between this ideal fantasy land or, or a bliss consciousness and right. real world obstacles and adversity? Yeah. And I know anyone listening is in this environment where they're like, yes, okay, I listen to this podcast and I'm excited and I want to work out and take better care of myself. And ah, here's my obstacles. There's still all this dynamite everywhere. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's, you've got to start and meet yourself where you're at. And I'm doing that in the parenthood place as well, where it's like, I in no way, shape or form 
look like this whole process of I'm perfect at parenting. But what I do know is I've overheard my kids talking about me behind my back of, oh my God, like to their new friends when we moved out here. Oh my God, my dad is such a big kid. Just so you know, he's like Peter Pan. <laughs> he's so playful and goofy and funny and weird. He's so embarrassing, but it's actually kind of cool. And, yeah. and I think for me, my whole essence around parenthood and taking all these different mental, emotional, spiritual practices with my own kids is they only work when they don't know I'm using them or I'm using them in an energy of fun. So for example, if my son gets hurt, I'll use EFT tapping on him and all of a sudden I'll watch him calm down center, start breathing, his nervous system changing, great. If I'm like, Braden, you need to go do some tapping. I just gave him an assignment. No interest, whatever, dad. Right. The energy behind it all is great. And then for me, if I make it fun and inviting, like, hey, come ch check out these indigenous drums or these crystals or this magical stuff, or come work out with me and let's go watch this really fun, you know, movie together. Like I just watched one of the Rockies with my son while we're working out together. Like if I make it fun and inviting, that's the leading by example. And it works really well. If I tell them what to do, they're like, you don't tell me what to do. I don't follow rules. <laughs> right. <clears throat> well, and that, that lesson right there, Kyle, can be used. Everyone that's listening leads people. Mm -hmm. And just the leadership component of making it fun and inviting versus just telling people what to do is a huge game changer, especially in a childcare environment. It's supposed yeah. to be fun. It's supposed to be joyous. It's supposed to be, you know, like positive learning and collaborative and, and, you know, and all of those values. Um, and so I love what you should just share because 110% uh, as leadership, as a parent, you know, as a parent, you are a leader. You're basically leading your kids into the possibility of what their lives could be. And um, I bet it's really fun for them. I love that. It, re it really is. And, and yeah. I'll stress for those listening at home that impact isn't about telling somebody what to do that, so that they can follow it. Like that's, that's high school, right? Re listen, regurgitate and spit it back. Impact is all empowerment from within. That's what impact is. Mm -hmm. Right. You want to impact somebody, empower them from within, make them feel confident that they've actually been empowered from within, that they can do these things on their own. To me, that's what it's all about. And I do my best to do that with my kids instead of like, oh, here, I'll do this for you. Or, hey, do this. Here's your 15 tasks. They aren't going to know or remember how to do it or have any joy behind it that way. And again, the only difference between kids and adults are, you know, numbers that pass. We're all big kids. Yeah. Well, I love that. And that was really the essence of your talk, uh, being a big kid and uh, sharing your your puppetry and your voices. And also, I love the uh, Chinese finger. Yeah, what was Chinese that thing? finger cuffs. Yep. Everybody, I have yeah. so much video of everybody of 1200 people with their fingers, with their partner and sitting next to them in Chinese finger cuffs. And that was a really yeah. an entertaining and fun um, experience. And I'll, let, I'll let everybody in uh, on a secret who was there. The reason I really had y'all locked into those Chinese finger cuffs was so you weren't texting on your phone going, what's this guy doing or saying? You're all having <laughs> the force to be present. It's a beautiful thing. Like you're yeah. present, you're in the moment and uh, and you're locked in and you're connected. That's, uh, that's, that's a little secret there. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <clears throat> My final question, because we're out of time, which is crazy. I have so much more that I want to ask you, um, is about things that you love that you read and watch. So books, podcasts, resources, you mentioned mm -hmm. Go-Giver. There's a whole Go-Giver series. So I don't know if that's one, but um, if, you know, what are some nuggets that you can share around that with the listeners? Mm, great question. I'm a, just a very big, avid reader. Um, uh, uh, one of my biggest things is looking at history and the awareness and the brilliance that's come throughout the ages of times. We, uh, We've had so much brilliance that came before, you know, pre-internet days. I'm a huge fan of, you know, Viktor Frankl's Man Search for Meeting. And, yes. And really getting this just true awareness of like, how can we overcome those pieces of adversity? But one thing that I would really stress um, uh, to anyone living at home is, is look for things that make you not only think about life differently and elevate your consciousness, 
but fall more in love uh, with yourself. So I'll actually, I'll give you all a recommendation of a book of one of my friends, um, Panash Desai, who's a spiritual leader, like a Deepak Chopra. He has a book called You Are Enough, mm. um, which actually aligns with one of my core values, which is You Are Enough. I'm a huge believer in that of, you know, we tend to look at things, we focus on what we think is needing to be fixed or healed. Or, okay, well, okay, I need to heal this. So let's put a magnifying glass on this and then go blame our background and blame this. And we go so much into like the why instead of realizing that you're already whole, worthy, and complete. And Panache's book is a great awareness of that. Uh, this is uh, a highly enlightened individual and really just puts it in a beautiful way. Love that. You are enough. Um, thank you. And Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl is one of my favorites. And mm. also, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Simon Sinek, oh, but yeah. I actually interviewed Simon on our virtual summit 2020. And he said that that was one of his foundational things that's impacted his whole life is Man's Search for Meaning. So if, if you guys have not read that, I highly recommend that one. Uh, mm. anything, anything else, Kyle? Any other stuff you want to recommend or any other uh, final final thoughts for the audience? Yeah, I'll leave you all with uh, with my favorite core value for my business because it's it kind of wraps everything up in a in a really nice little bow which is I heard the statistic once and I use this all the time because again repetition is the mother of all skill but it's that the average child so the average child laughs 400 times a day and the average adult laughs four. Mm. And when I heard that, it just gave me such an awareness that we have the wrong metrics. Yeah. And mm. laugh more is one of my biggest core values. And I really, truly believe like, yes, the work you are doing is so important. Yes, the sculpting and shaping of a child's mind is so important. And it doesn't mean that it needs to be serious. It just needs to be important. It should actually not be serious at all. It should be fun and playful and inviting, just like everything else that you should be doing in life. It just takes that edge and overwhelm and stress off because the one last thing I'll tell you with kids is that they all notice is they notice energy, stress, overwhelm, all the things that you're hiding. because They're just sitting there watching you. Yep. Love that. That's so powerful. All right. Well, playfulness and 400 versus four. So we got to change that. We're all part of the solution on trying to laugh more, giggle more, and bring joy to every moment as a Definitely. leader and just as a human being and a parent. So I love that. Um, how can people contact you and find out more about you and or becoming a Rapid Harmony member? Awesome. So first off, thank you so much for having me. This was an absolute blast. Uh, I think before I give them my social, we should show them the last little secret, which is how we end all of our workouts. Speaking of having some joy, do you want to, you want to show that? Oh, sure. Why not? Why not? We're having fun <laughs> here today. So we could show them. So at the end of all of our workouts, I have Chris do the double bicep kiss. So she finishes her workout. She's a power. She kisses both the biceps and just steps into like that mini celebration energy. Like, you know, I just did it. You know, it's early in the morning. May not have wanted to be here, but I did it. So those little mini celebrations are beautiful. Yeah. And then the other morning I did it with my daughter, Maeve, because she walked in and she was going yes. to work out. And so we did, we both did it. We did a mother daughter. That was that incredible. Was pretty great. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> so uh, on social media, uh, rapid.harmony uh, is the current social media, you know, Instagram address. Okay. And then uh, you can learn anything more at rapidharmony.com. And yeah, if anyone has any thoughts, ideas, questions, any type of uh, way I can be a service, just reach out anytime. Awesome. Well, Kyle Brown, this has been so great. And there is a good chunk of questions we didn't even get to today, as I had a feeling that might happen. Uh, so we'll bring you back for another episode Sounds in the great. future. Um, thank you so much for being here on Child Care Rockstar Radio. And I'm honored to have you in my life. And it's just been an incredible journey together. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Feelings are mutual, and this is a blast. I love this community. I love the impact uh, from the ground up. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your day. Go out and laugh more. Have more fun. Be playful. And we can't wait to see you next time on the next episode. 
here on the podcast. Take care and God bless. I hope you liked this episode of Childcare Rockstar Radio. If you did, please share it with someone you know and help spread the word to your friends in our industry and on social media. Childcare business success is my passion and I'm honored to be on this journey with you. As a thank you for listening, learn more about how to grow your business and make more income with our brand new free quiz, the What's My Number One Income Killer quiz, exclusively for preschool and childcare owners. Take the quiz today at childcarequiz.com to discover what your number one income killer is and how to solve it. Take care and God bless.